here we can see the uh, the the <laughs> what would you call this? The back. Welcome and thanks for joining me. In this episode, we get to see the inner workings of Kai Corpella's handmade Turbion watch. So when I was at the school, I was very lucky um, that Kai was free. I wanted to meet him and see his handmade Turbion watch. And I was actually uh, made aware of him towards the beginning of this year uh, by Oliver at OBR Horology. You know, then I sort of looked into it and I saw, you know, several articles from like Monochrome, SJX, and I think Time and, and Watches. And uh, you know what? I was blown away. First of all, like I had never heard of him. I don't know why. And secondly, like just the um, just the time and dedication and everything that he put in and he made a functioning handmade Turbion watch, you know, and I love I really love handmade products, especially when they look like it's impossible to make by hand. And for me, Kai has like really nailed a lot of that. Like it, it is amazing. And don't get me wrong, I have nothing against CNC machining in watchmaking. You know, when something is handmade, it just brings the product back all the way to the roots of its art form. So with your watch, could you just run through um, a bit of the details? Exactly, yeah. So here, here is the, the dial side actually. So without the dial and there is the, the bridge holding the, the tourbillon from one side. Or the escapement is not in the tourbillon, so it's completely free. And the setting system is supposed to be here. The minute wheel, cannon pinion and the hour wheel. All the parts are actually in the box here now. And here is the, the back side. I decided to actually make a one complete bridge covering most of the movement and uh, but I wanted to show the Torbjorn also a part of it and uh, so I decided to do a uh, skeletonizing yep. and uh, so you can actually see through the movement mm. and uh, this part is made in, in steel and it actually took took about a week to do the skeletonizing and the anglage and fitting it to the movement. Yeah. So it's quite intricate. Yeah, that's really nice. And what uh, material is your main plate and, and the main like main plate and the bridge is yeah. it is brass. Okay. And it's plated with uh, it's rhodium. And it's all in the Geneva stripes on the, yeah, the, the back exactly. bridge. So you call that one piece the back bridge? Yeah. Yeah. That's and it. the steel center is connected to the back It is underneath. Okay. They are actually, the steel bridge here is actually screwed into the main plate, partly covered. Yeah. And see if I can actually take it out. So here you see how it's, it's actually screwed. <clears throat> ah, yes. With a bridge in between because I have the second, third wheel here mm -hmm. between jewels. So in the end, this part actually became quite intricate with many small parts around to be able to sandwich it. Yeah. Into the, between the. So it's like sandwiched between. The main plate and the back bridge. Yep. Wow, that's really so nice. So that I could. Yeah. And then you got the Turbion uh, bridge out of steel. Yeah, that's the, in uh, entirely in steel. And how many parts in total? Is oh, I don't remember. I once counted, but maybe it's about two hundred parts. About okay. If counting all the, the pins and the screws. Yes. Yep. And uh, I made all the parts except the, the hair spring, the main spring, the jewels. Yep. That's all the other parts I actually made. You see also the dial is actually in a few parts. 
that was also a challenge finding out how to do it yeah because it's one part the outer side and the center mm -hmm. they are both in silver mm -hmm. pure silver but the outer part is has been pickled yes so it turned white and so, oh, sorry yep <coughs> and uh, the index they are in in uh, in uh, red gold red gold yeah you can see <coughs> it looks really nice mm. and so is the uh, dial one piece of silver or is it it's uh, like two two, two actually yeah yeah yep. and i also um a steel ring a steel ring yeah uh, that's interesting how you attached it all together <laughs> to mm. make it yeah one exactly piece, yeah it's just cool. uh, press fit now wow wow that's amazing and so the whiteness of, <clears throat> of of the silver so there's a process where you can heat uh the silver and it oxidizes black you pickle it you heat it again is that the process that you used exactly and, yes. uh, and then it gets that really white that's that's really mm. nice i like that and that's mm. something that i want to try to, mm. to and it, it really uh, stays get, yeah this white cream slightly cream color yeah, yeah that's really nice and did you have anything to is there a, like a protective or is just the raw at the moment yes exactly i i left it raw wow i think uh, you could you could protect it with uh with a clear coat yeah some sort but i, I left it raw and uh, therefore it is very very uh, uh, sensitive yes. for touches and uh, yep it can get marked very very easily yeah Oh, wow, that's amazing. And so mm. did you make the uh, indices as well by... Yes, exactly. I had to so file. So by hand? Yeah. By file. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. And what's the thickness of that? Uh, that must be... Can it be 0 0.4 maybe? Wow. 0 0.4 millimeters. Yeah. 0 0.3 maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> that's amazing. So actually, yeah. Sorry. And then you polish them on the on the surface. Exactly. Of each indice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can see so much <clears throat> work has gone into uh, the dial. Oh yes. And the uh, minute uh, markers. Mm -hmm. um, they are all. Uh, I actually on the pointer. I actually engraved them. Oh wow! Yes. And then I filled them with uh, enamel, black enamel color. Yep. And then I kind of uh, like um, sandblasting, but grinding. Okay. Yep. Like on a aluminium oxide. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The whole surface there. Wow. Yeah, and they get <clears throat> that frosted. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, that's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful dial. Mm -hmm. But still everything, it's still like a prototype. So it has uh, flaws everywhere understand mm. so how many you've made one or yeah two? yeah i i ran out of time when i finished uh, my first one here yeah but now i i disassemble it to to i want to redo some parts and actually restart remodel yep um uh, article from like 2016 is that could when be you... end of 2016 yeah monochrome yeah I exactly think? yeah yeah True, exactly. Yeah, it's almost yeah. three years soon. So it's been a long time. Oh, since, yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. That's, uh, that's really, really nice. Yeah. And so this was made on uh, manual, using manual machinery, mm -hmm. all by hand. And uh, yeah, it looks amazing in person. So unfortunately, we had to end our filming right then and there because the train was like 20 minutes away. This was right at the end of the workshop tour with Henrik. And, you know, Swiss trains run very well. I was very impressed with the Swiss uh, public transport system. Henrik basically um, turned into a racing car driver and got us there and we ran for the train. But the good news is uh, Kai is was very kind enough to invite me into his home a few days later. We met up and we sat down and did like an uh, interview podcast thing. So I hope you enjoyed this. We got to see the inner workings of this amazing watch and meet the master behind it. 